You're listening to the Post-Apocalyptic Media Podcast. If it's post-apocalyptic, we're talking about it. Hello and welcome everybody to Post-Apocalyptic Media, the podcast. I'm your host, Derek. I'm joined with Sean. Hey. And Stephanie. Hello. I just want to, at the top of the show, I want to tell you about our calendar. If you go to our website and you see the calendar, what you're going to see there is a lot of great announcements in the post-apocalyptic media genre. So... If you want to know what movies are coming out soon in post-apocalyptic media, look at that calendar. Games, uh, even events. We're we're trying to fill that thing up with anything that would be interesting to um, to people who like post-apocalyptic media of all sorts. So uh, go to our website, check that out. It's at the top now, at the top menu. You can just see calendar, click on it, you're in. Also, if you want to be kept up to date about our articles once a month, we send out an email, and in that email, we list every single article we've published in the last month. It's a great way to keep up to date. You can just skim through that, see what you want to read, click it right out of the email. You don't even have to uh, you know, open a web browser and go check yourself. You just, you just go straight from the email. So sign up for that email list, ladies and gentlemen. That's going to be on our website uh, at the top menu bar as well. So. Um, both of those are options. And lastly, last announcement, I just want to say thank you. Thank you to those of you who have left reviews. Thank you for those who've just listened. And, um, you know, if you like it, maybe put a little uh, comment on there. Maybe you get it, give it a little five star. Uh, let, ever, let other people know, hey, if you're interested in this topic, you're going to find good information out there uh, if you subscribe to our podcast. So, um, if you do that, uh, you know, tell your friends, share it, protest in the streets, let people know the post-apocalyptic media the podcast is worth listening to. Um, we are we are going to talk about a various lot of things today, but I want to open up the show uh, talking about real quick this article that Sean wrote about the mobile game market in the post-apocalyptic space um, or just the mobile game market in general it's uh, it, post-apocalyptic games have become one of the most profitable uh, genres there is and two games in particular are blowing up right now one of which is called state of survival it's going to be in the app store and the other one is last shelter survival i'll repeat those state of survival last shelter survival check it out they're really popular um if you uh if you have a mobile device maybe you'll like them uh, i can tell you i haven't played it yet and uh as i understand sean you haven't played it yet either have you no neither one no yeah so, uh, you know, we can't speak to whether they're good or not, but you know what we'd like to know? Whether they're good or not. <laughs> mm-hmm. So if you are one of the brave souls who download the app and play it and have an opinion on it, then, um, then our socials are open to you. We are an open forum for you to just lay it out there. Let us know if this is a game that, uh, that I'm making a mistake by not playing. Um, <laughs> I'll tell you the last mobile game that I picked up because of one of Sean's articles is called Atom RPG. Mm. It's kind of this like Fallout style, like original Fallout style clone, top down, isometric, you know, uh, kind of turn based situation. And I tell you, it has made um, it has made me quite depressed. (laughs) (laughs) So play it, kids. Wow. Yeah. (laughs) It's, you know what I think is funny though about mobile games versus, you know, regular games, is uh, you know you're asking if it's good, and I think a lot of times it doesn't matter as much. You know what hmm. I mean? Like people play PC games and Xbox games to really get into the story and the, the gameplay. Mm-hmm. These games, I think, they 
they fill time. You know, you're sitting in the dentist's office and you want something to do or, mm. you know, um, things like that where you're kind of filling in time. You just pick it up, turn it on real quick. I mean, you want something that you can just do a little mission or whatever really quickly without worrying about getting involved in this deep storyline and all that stuff. So I, it's a totally different, you know, it's apples and oranges, I think. But That's such a good point because I think about like, Half the time I'm just using social media on my phone. It's just to kill time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, I'm just wanting to fill up time. So that makes a lot of sense about those games. And that'd probably be more fun than social media <laughs> in a lot of ways. <laughs> yeah. I've been in situations where they're like, your pizza's ready. And I'm like, no, just hold on. I'm in the middle <laughs> right? of a mobile game right now. <laughs> you, you need Candy Crush out where you're just like, you know, moving your thumb and it's like, making chiming noises it's it's yeah. like uh it's like playing the the i forgot the word slot, slot machine <laughs> yeah <laughs> have a second <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah candy crush is a great example it's just dings and you know flashy colors and you know it, it really gets you but i i don't know i think um i think this is interesting in the fact that 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 post-apocalyptic ones are the are the focus you know what i mean like hmm. Like people are really looking and, and it's ironic, maybe possibly. So the thing is that, you know, with, with something like this, that you're playing mobile, you know, it, it's something that you just want to grab and you want to, you know, you know, just jump on and play. So I think that it's interesting that the post-apocalyptic genre, you know, that, that part of it is catching on. I mean, they say 106 percent growth in just that setting, that post-apocalyptic setting. Wow. Um, now, does that wow. mean that people are doing that because we're in a pandemic? You know, are they more interested in it or are they just are there just more games available like that? I don't know. Hmm. Um, it seems to me that that, you know, with the game, I mean, the pandemic started kind of earlier this year. So it, I guess it would be kind of hard for people to just make games immediately hmm. to get to take advantage of that market. So I think it's more probable that it's people playing existing games you know, that are in that setting, which is the more interesting side, I think. But. Yeah, I, th I think it can motivate people. You know, something I've I've encountered a lot as a prepper is um, is the people, they don't want to believe that things could change. And it's yeah. it's almost, sometimes it makes them uncomfortable to even think about it. Like you tell them, oh, I've done this to prepare and they're not, they they feel uncomfortable that they haven't prepared at all. And so mm. it's like they're trying to justify to themselves, ah, you know, I'll never have need for clean water, you know, yeah. that I make myself. Mm -hmm. It's always going to be there. And um, I think, you know, in a, in a situation like this where there were lines of production got, that got slowed down, yeah. um, you know, food supplies got held up a little bit. You know, this wasn't this wasn't an apocalypse of any sort, but it or reminded people that it was <laughs> we'll have to yeah that's that's the next topic um <laughs> we'll have a formal debate but but you know it 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 brought it to people's minds that this mm. is something that's realistic it could be that you need to fend for yourself if only for a little bit yeah so um i think they're correlated yeah that's such a good point you make too derek about um how people don't want to believe that things can change. Like I even think about when I was following the start of this pandemic in January, you know, cause I was reporting on it and I was in some uh, groups on Reddit where we were all talking about it or I was more listening, but, <laughs> but you know, even then, you know, I was like, you know, I should buy a few things. I mean, we're, you, you know, we're, we're prepared, but you know, you're, you're thinking like, should I do a little more or, or should I do this? Should I do that? And, and I was reading these threads with people who were talking about who didn't weren't prepared and they're talking about, should I buy this? Should I buy that? And there's like that pushback, you know, you want to think, well, I mean, that's out there. Is that really going to be a problem here? Well, you know, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it will be. And, and, and it's best to, to be, to be ready. It's, you know, and be prepared. But it was just kind of crazy to to sit back and watch that and have that internal feeling of no, that's not going to happen here. But then also your rational side of your brain is like, yeah, yeah, that's a virus that's coming here too. You know what I think is interesting is 
you, now you see preppers on both sides of the political spectrum. Mm. You know, it used to be more kind of you would think of a prepper as a, you know, crazy guy who lives out in the woods, um, you know, like me. But, um, <laughs> but it, it's it's just like it's all yeah. over now. And, yeah. and I think that's important because it means that more people are taking it seriously. And that's that's good. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yeah, we could stand to be more resilient as a yep. species, and uh, we've grown soft in our yeah. in our cities of comfort, and it's it's good yeah. to be able to learn how to do that stuff ourselves. It's yeah. like that's a topic they talk about a lot on The Walking Dead, right? Where they're like, you know, they, you've had that push and pull between some characters who don't want to live in the city. You know, when they put together a safer town, they don't want to live there because they're afraid they're going to get soft, and when it's taken away, they're not going to be as ready as they were, and you think about where we, you know, we have all this great technology, but survival skills, man, we, we had much better survival skills in some ways a hundred years ago and could make our own bread more easily. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Did y'all ever see that movie Into the Wild? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Sure. With the, uh, what was that kid's name? Um, the one that lived on the bus? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the, the, I don't, it was too long uh, ago. Yeah, he had a crazy name. Oh, it's on the tip of my tongue. It was like a band name that he named himself. I don't, I don't know. Anyway, but yeah, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, in, in that movie, um, it, it was long enough ago. I think I can I can go ahead and spoil it. But yeah. uh, a guy tries, he just like wakes up one day, basically, as so far as I understand, and, uh, and tries to live on his own without society hmm. to help him. And um, uh, to long story short, he didn't know what, what berries were poisonous and which were not. Yeah. And uh, yep. so his story ended uh, with little fanfare. Yeah. And just kind of goes to show, you know, production of food, staying away from, um, you know, things that could kill us. It's, it's just something that we've, uh, we're not, we're not quite able to have the, the wisdom of our forefathers, things that they would consider very simple. So um, uh, anyways, Moving right along, uh, I wanted to bring up the fact that Sean has never watched The Matrix. <laughs> <laughs> Sean! I'm that guy. I'm that one guy. Yep. <laughs> You're the one person in the entire United States, or maybe even the world. <laughs> <laughs> but it's fun when people are like, hey, so two and three weren't as good as one, am I right? And I'm like, yeah, totally. <laughs> Well, that's a pretty safe position. That's a to safe take. position to take. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but in, in all seriousness, Matrix is number one on Stephanie's top post-apocalyptic movies list. It's really good. And um, the first one, not two and three. The first one, not two and three. Stephanie verifies. Yeah, totally. Yeah, she's probably <laughs> just like Sean. Thank you, she's Sean, never for seen backing me up. <laughs> just going off the poppy. I'm going to take I'm going to take a controversial position here and say that what Matrix 3 does is uh is outstanding and um and it was a great movie for uh for putting in a twist that nobody saw coming. So, uh what do what do I mean by that? Do you remember <laughs> Matrix 3 anybody? Uh, I mean, I'm trying to remember the land? details like I saw Matrix 1 like a million times and two and three I probably watched one time each. So Well, um And Sean's just not Yeah, into totally. It. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Matrix one was this mind blowing, like for a lot of us it was kind of our first uh exposure to the idea that maybe um maybe we're living in a simulated reality. Mm-hmm. Which twenty twenty is like making more and more possible but yes <laughs> yeah well you know there's some smart people who think it's think it's true and they do this thought experiment that goes like this they say with the way things are headed in technology is it possible that we will ever be able to simulate um a universe like our own and most of them will say yes it's possible that someday that we're going to do that with the way advancements are going right now so they go okay if that is true then isn't it likely that we will do it? You know, and, and you could you could think of some good reasons too. So, for instance, I could spin up a universe 
fast forward it, you know, several thousand years, give them the tech they need it. And then they're making TV shows. I can just extract those TV shows from my simulation and throw it out into my real world. It's brilliant. Need to patent that idea. It's <laughs> unless it's already happening. <laughs> it and now, we are. The, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wait, where'd you get that idea? <laughs> <laughs> oh no. <laughs> so then they say, you know, if that's true, then theoretically there are thousands, tens of thousands of simulations of a universe, just like our own, that are going to exist. And if that's the case, how do we know that we're not inside of one of those right now? If there are a thousand universes that exist and 999 of them are simulated, then we have a one in a thousand chance of having, of living right now in the real universe. <laughs> so I think I mean what is the what what is it that I've said to you Derek that that I believe that I mean you know if if the simulate if we are a simulation if that were the you know hypothetical that we accepted you know the speed of light would be what how, how do you phrase it the the top processing speed you know that as fast that's as fast as the computer can process so nothing can go faster than the speed of light because that is the top processing speed. Yeah. Why is there a universal speed limit? Doesn't that like everything seems to be its own thing, like where, uh, you know, the the variables affect the end product. But with speed, it's like nothing gets faster than that particular limit. It does seem like it could be a processor limitation. Um, you know, there's another thing, which is um, with quantum physics, uh, a lot of times they, you know, my understanding of it, I know it's super complicated and I'm not qualified to explain it really, <laughs> but um, observed things tend to act a little bit differently than something where we measure before and after. It's like if we observe the whole thing, it, it like it affects it somehow. And there is a, uh, and, and that got me started thinking, like if you pulled up Google earth right now and you did like a zoom out of the United States, you would see like one level of, uh, of detail on that. But if you zoomed in, it's not like instant because mm -hmm. what it's doing is it's not actually loading every single pixel they have. They're only loading what you need to see for that zoomed out picture. And then when you zoom in, that's when it starts to load in the more detailed picture. And so if we were in a simulated universe, we might see that at the very, very low level, they do like more simple, complicated, more simple calculations to say, you know, how the universe works. But then you look really closely at it and it has to do more complex calculations, which is why things react a little bit differently if we're observing them. Yeah. I know somebody's going to debunk me. <laughs> No, five I'm, on board. I'm on board. I'm on board. I mean, time cast. dilation, right? Like, you know, going back to processing speed and and time dilation and how, you know, time kind of slows down as you're getting closer to that top processing speed. I mean, it hmm. all makes sense. Hmm. Okay. So that's like a CPU process. I don't. I don't know code. I, I mean, but here's the thing, though. I mean, obviously, my analogy here is a little limited because if something that's creating a simulation this extensive is not going to be a regular old CPU, right? It's it's going to be a much more complicated computer. So, you know. Yeah, things we can't imagine right now. It's, um, gosh, I can't believe I can't think of it. But <laughs> so um, so anyways, back to Matrix Matrix. It's great. You got Matrix one, two and three and the Animatrix. If there's more Matrix than that, I haven't seen it. And there probably is. There's probably a cart, a comic or something. But um, but on that topic, I just I really I just wanted to praise Matrix three. I think that there's somebody out there who's really proud of Matrix three. And I want to tell them it was good. You did good. I don't don't listen to the Stephanies and the Shans of this world. <laughs> <laughs> You're so encouraging. It, because you know what it does is, you know, so often we have the robot war, 
And it's always like, I'll be honest with you guys. I know Terminator's scary, but it's not as scary as what a real robot war would look like. Robots yeah. are, don't miss. They don't just like spray <laughs> bullets. They're going to hit yeah, you yeah. with every bullet. And not only that, but they're going to use chemical warfare like there's no tomorrow. We're, yeah. we're so soft. We're just bags of skin and blood and it's <laughs> we're very weak and uh so like the robot war is very one-sided and that's what M matrix 3 kind of exposes is that uh you know through matrix we we feel like we're having this battle to free humanity and at the end the robot just shows its trump card and it's just like we we're toying with you this whole time there's no way you could ever beat us you know yeah. we let you get this far kind of a thing and um right it just really it, it uh it was very creative and bold what they did i think they they released those movies way faster than um than normal release schedule i want to say like a year later it was coming out and um i'm gonna do another another watch through pretty soon because i need to remind myself of all the details but uh uh just wanted to bring up the matrix and uh and praise matrix three because Really, really, it was it was a good movie. It wasn't as bad as people say. It was just in light of Matrix One that people had too high standards. I think. Well, I think a rewatch is a good idea because they're coming out with a fourth movie. So. Oh, oh! I, I forgot about that. There's a fourth movie coming. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Cool. Cool. Do you know when? I, I'm sure. I mean, no. I'm guessing, like everything else, it was put it was postponed because of the pandemic. But you know, maybe they you know released a virus into the simulation because people needed to take a little bit of a vacation mm -hmm. from manning the quantum computer that's running it. So that's probably it. <laughs> I, could you elaborate on that connection? I'm not like. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> You know, they ha people had to be kept indoors, you know, and not do as much so that the people running the quantum computer that's running our simulation could take more of a break. They were so tired. you're saying it like takes less processing power for me to sit and eat a large pizza by myself than to say, like, go out for a jog. Probably, yes. Theoretically, given the quantum computers, um, you know, capabilities totally making all this up in my head, but. <laughs> <laughs> all right steph what is your topic for this week my topic for this week is attack on titan we uh already had this topic but uh, very briefly previous a uh, few episodes ago but derek and i just finished watching attack on titan seasons one through three um, season four, the, uh, subbed version, not the dubbed version is coming out in December and Derek had already seen it before I had not. And so, um, we just finished watching it a couple days ago and it was so good. Yeah. So good. Like this was my first introduction, I guess. I mean, aside from like, uh, legends of legend of Korra, um, avatar this was my first anime you know like real anime and um and it was good so one thing i'll throw out there is if anyone listening has suggestions for other really good post-apocalyptic animes do send those thoughts my way hmm. because that was great and i need more you know, I don't know. Is anything as good as Attack on Titan? I'm now in the Attack on Titan subreddit where they say no. So hopefully they're wrong. <laughs> I think every single every single subreddit, they all say their thing is the best. It's, it's yeah. just what they do all day. So. <laughs> it's so true. It's so true. But this was, this show is so good. And if you have not seen it, um, if you're listening, watching, and you have not seen Attack on Titan... Um, you need to. Um, I Years ago, I watched the first episode with Derek, and um, I don't know why I was turned off on it back then. Um, too dark, I think, I thought, which it's very dark. Yeah. I mean, really, like, there are some scenes that are very gruesome. Don't get too attached to any character. 
Yeah, don't get too attached to anyone. There are some very, very gruesome scenes that you may even want to look away from, and you might not expect that. You're like, well, this is... No, it gets very dark. So, you know, be prepared for that. But it's so good. It's very intricate. The plot line is very complex. I'm not going to, like, give away a lot of spoilers because I'm encouraging people here who haven't watched it to watch it. But, um... Give us, it is very complicated. Give us the plot in, in episode one. What's what's the situation? I mean, okay, so basically these super these giants called Titans. They're they um we've got this these main characters who at the time they're kids, but then um they're teenagers when through the majority of the series. But when they're kids, they're everybody has to in their world has to live behind giant walls. Um, because there's these, these giants, I don't want to say cannibals, but these giants who live outside of the walls who eat people. And, um, that's just their thing. They eat people. You can't talk to them and they're super, super, super creepy looking and they will creep you out. There will be some scenes and you'll be looking at these giants and be like, could they, how are giants, like they made these really creepy They're super scary, and they eat people. So because of that, they have to live in these cities behind these giant walls that keep them out. It's very post-apocalyptic. You know, they're probably the last of humanity, you know? And um, these... uh, So anyway, the first episode is that they... There's these new titans show up that they've never seen before, and they're able to break down the wall, and all... The other Titans flood in, and people get eaten. And um, so then, you know, it's a fight for survival. Humanity's trying to survive. They need to figure out a way to kill what seems almost unkillable. And this terrible army of Titans. So it's, um, you know, there's some shades of, like, if you like zombie shows like The Walking Dead, you know, this will appeal to you because it's got that same kind of, you know, massive thing that you have to fight, except Titans are so much tougher than zombies, <laughs> you know, because they're like giant, but you also can't reason with them either. So um, it's um, it's really intense. And I'll just say the plot gets very complicated, which I like. There's a lot of mystery. There's a lot of mythology. Um, it's really good. Yeah, it's it's very philosophical. They mm-hmm. they delve deeply into philosophy. And, you know, Japanese media is uh, right there with the United States when it comes to focusing on the post-apocalypse. Yeah. Uh, you know, of course, Japan got two, uh, two atomic bombs dropped on them. The only nation to ever have to deal with that. And, uh, you know, clearly, clearly that's had an impact on, um, on their thinking about that. Uh, you know, and we're the nation that dropped it. And I guess that's, that's part of it. But I think, it, you know, it's also, it's also that the United States and Russia were in a protracted Cold War for so long. Of course, you can go back before the Cold War. We were having, uh, I think, the, a boy and his dog was before Cold War. We were we were thinking about the destructive yeah. power of the atomic bomb before um, that really got into full swing. But um, but yeah, it's a it's a good uh, take on pragmatism, uh, utilitarianism, uh, big philosophical words that I'm not even sure I understand. But uh, I just throw them out there to look smart. They sound good. <laughs> 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 and uh and kind of horror suspense is, is woven horror, into there yeah. and and the philosophical part i'm glad you brought that up because there are just moments when they say things philosophically and you're like wow okay that really applies to what's going on in the u.s right now and <laughs> well that hit home you know <laughs> and it's it really it's good yeah they're building walls and retreating within the walls to keep out the other, like the social media site Parlor. I'm just <laughs> <laughs> Facebook, please sponsor us. We just we will we've got Parlor jokes for days. So uh, 
I thought it was parlay. I was expecting that. <laughs> oh, was it? <laughs> well, okay. So, you know, or or I've got zingers that are equally effective against Facebook. So, you know, parlay, if you're listening, uh, check this out. Either, either one. You've got either my one. number. <laughs> Oh my gosh, that was good. It's but like a choose your own adventure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're, we'll get biased real quick over here uh, for the for the right money, but only <laughs> only between Parlor and Facebook. Um, <laughs> Attack on Titan is really um, really complicated. My my one bit of advice is if you do re- watch it, uh, just pay close attention. Mm-hmm. It's it's hard, you know, make it make an effort to remember names. It was on my second watch through that I actually got their names down. And um, yeah. even then it was not without effort. Yeah. And there are, you know, the meme the, of the mind being blown memes. There were moments that was literally me. They would make a reveal and I would just make Derek pause and just stare at him with my mouth hanging open. <laughs> just like, what? That? You know, and then I'd have to stop and discuss it with him to make sure I understood what I just learned correctly and was processing it right before we moved on. I mean, very few shows do that to me. And that was that. Yeah, that was great. And now we're getting a new new season, you know. Um, Yep. We got a new season, uh, you know, and also there's there's Tack on Titan Junior High. Which mm. we haven't watched. Haven't watched. It's not dubbed. So oh. you know, if you want, if you want us to watch your show, you got to dub it in English. Uh, we might. We Is might it still on Amazon? watch it. It's on Hulu. I don't Hulu. know. Okay. I don't know for sure oh, yeah. uh, if it's on anywhere else. But um, yeah, I don't know. Hulu it's tends Hulu. to corner the market on everything. Uh, Attack on Titan. Except I think you can get season one of Attack on Titan on Netflix. Hmm. But uh, I don't even think you get the dubbed version on netflix is this really titled wow so yeah and then there's like a couple extra a few extras extra episodes that were filmed that are between like maybe season two and season three i'm not sure derek and i watched the first one but we're still trying to locate the other ones Hmm. yeah Um, but i'm gonna be writing a lot of stories about attack on titan before the new season premieres because just letting y'all know committing to that because I am pumped about the show. And so, but I haven't, there's a main, okay. So there's a manga that it's, am I pronouncing that right? (laughs) There's a manga that it's based on that is ahead. What did you say, Sean? No, I think it is. I think it's manga. (laughs) I mispronounce (laughs) everything. So, um, but there's a manga it's based on that is, I guess, publishing the last season or its version of it already so just to let you know we haven't read that so we haven't read that we haven't watched the live action movies no movie. can't remember there's, there's one movie. live action movie one, that i want to okay, check out yeah one Had live action reviews. movie junior I mean, I high just one. and ost i think it's called is OST. is the uh the mini episodes but they're not mini episodes they're just episodes that they didn't shuffle into a season but uh we've watched one uh, by good. the computer science, the computer science maybe? YouTube channel. Yep. Um, 91 subscribers. We dropped their name last week on the podcast or yeah. two weeks ago. So let's see what the uh, post-apocalyptic podcast bump did for their YouTube channel. I'm going to search it right now so there can be no funny business. <laughs> While he's searching, I'm just going to say that my articles are not going to have any manga spoilers in them because I'm, I want to watch the anime fresh without having read that. So if you are only watching the anime, then you might enjoy my articles that I'm going to be working on. All right. YouTube is trying to keep me from them right now. However, while you're still trying to figure that out, I will also add that... Um, Season the first half of season three has an intro that is weird. It is sort of that season that series version of the Star Trek Enterprise intro, if you guys know what I'm talking about. Um it is just very 
very different in tone. I, I like the fast paced going to battle intros with Titans streaming everywhere. And the first half of season three had a very slow, sweet intro that is now stuck in my head. Wouldn't you say, Derek, that's a good example comparing it to Star Trek Enterprise's intro? Uh, no. No, I wouldn't. <laughs> I, I think he's going to say that. Enterprise has a uniquely terrible intro song that will never be. Uh, I think the only thing that That's comes close point. to Enterprise was that Babylon 5 spinoff show where they're like, oh my who gosh. do you serve? <laughs> yes. Who do you live for? You know, it was so it's awful. Just, that weird. was the worst intro. All right. The computer science. When we name dropped them, they were at 90... One subscribers. They are currently at 123. Wow. You're, You're welcome. welcome. Yep. <laughs> That's all you. <laughs> it's all us. <laughs> hey, can we get some of those subscribers? Like <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. We need to yeah, we need to extract some uh we need to sell the computer we'll science some ad space. Yeah, mm. we'll get trade. <laughs> subscribers. <laughs> yeah, I'm already buying email lists behind the scenes, so <laughs> we're we're about to blow up. Uh let's see. Okay, so we have we've covered Attack on Titan, we've yep. covered the mobile games. Sean, what you got for us this week? Well, this weekend my family was out of town, so I was able to sit down and watch something. It was amazing. And I watched uh C on Apple TV oh. Plus. Um I've been meaning, I mean, that's been out a year now. It came out last November, and it has Jason Momoa from Game of Thrones. Mm, and mm -hmm. what I think is funny, is I wrote an article about it. I kind of give my review and my wish list for season two, because season two is supposed to, it's like a, a done deal thing that they've agreed to do. They paid for it already, but the pandemic, you know, mm. that happened. So we have to wait probably till next year for season two. Um, this was actually supposed to be the time when season two was supposed to drop, because it was a year later. Oh, so we'll probably have to wait. But anyway, bummer. Um, my thing about it is I I went into it like I saw the first episode a long time ago because it was free. That you know, they they released that first episode for free so you could watch it. And I just recently Apple TV Plus had a free 3 month trial and I'm Ooh. like, "Well, I got to jump on that because I I've, oh, I've cool. heard from friends that there's a lot of things on there that I need to watch. Like there's a show called Mythic Quest which is hmm. uh with Felicia Day. No, no, it's um, it has Rob uh, McEnany, I think you pronounce his name, from Always Sunny in Philadelphia, and hmm. it's a hilarious show. I loved it. Anyway, so I I watched that, and then I said I you know C is definitely guilt. on the list. Yeah, yeah, the guild. Um, but I so I had to watch C, and I I kind of had an idea. I knew what it was about, but I kind of had an idea from that first episode. You know what it was, you know where it was going and everything. But I was blown away. I really, really, really? enjoyed it. I think that I, I don't think it gets the credit it deserves. And that's another thing I wrote about in the article, because I think mm -hmm. that people maybe misunderstand Apple TV Plus, mm -hmm. you know, because when you go on there, when you if you're an Apple user and you maybe you get that as a, you know, kind of a companion to your product, mm -hmm. um, you might look at it and think it's like Roku, which is basically you know, a rehashing of other channels, which is true. Mm -hmm. Apple TV Plus does do that. Like they'll have a list of shows and it'll say you can go on Hulu to watch this or you can go on Amazon to watch this or whatever. Um, so it's kind of like a um, like a landing pad for other stream streaming channels. But they also have their own original content. And I think that's what people don't understand hmm. is that they're making their own original content content to compete with Amazon, Hulu, Netflix. And I think that's a great idea. But this, when C came out, it, it came out the same day that Apple TV Plus came out, which was last last November uh, 1st, I think. So it was kind of their thing that they dropped at the same time, you know, and, and they were using it, you know, using Jason Momoa as as kind of this, you know, this advertising thing. But I think it just kind of fell flat. I don't know why. Hmm. A lot of people aren't talking about it. So, and, and I'm guilty of the same thing. You know, I, I didn't really follow through. Yeah. But I'm glad I did now. Um, let me just talk a little bit about what the show's about. So, the, this is supposed to be like 600 years in the future. 
and society there was a virus that basically made people blind um genetically like it's a genetic mutation that makes everyone blind even you know the offspring and everything so okay so so tons of generations you know hundreds of years have gone by and people have learned how to how to communicate and navigate without sight it's a really interesting concept because and i think they did a really good job with it um you know where they'll have like guide ropes in the village so they'll they'll hold on to the guide rope while they're walking from house to house they swing things in front of them hmm. to uh to make sure that they're not going to hit you know whatever hmm. uh they use a lot of their other senses are are you know really heightened so they use those it's it's really it's an interesting take but here's the thing is so this girl comes to the village and none of this is a spoiler because it all happens in the first episode uh this girl comes to the village and she's pregnant and she is uh, escaping some kind of tyranny. We don't really know what it is. And she's <laughs> really flustered. Anyway, so down the line, Jason Momoa's character, whose name is uh, Baba Voss, which is kind of, you, when you hear Baba Voss a hundred times, you're like, oh, I hate that name. It just, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it gets to you. Anyway, so, uh, so he takes her in and his, uh, he eventually marries her. And then she has the babies who are twins and he adopts them as his own children. Well, turns out they find out later that the children, as they're growing up, uh, can see. They have hmm. sight. So they they have to hide them because there's a queen in another village who kind of rules over the whole land. And she um, calls anyone with sight a witch. So she wants to she sends out witch finders to find these babies and kill them. So um, so, oh, wow. you know, there's a the whole thing about protecting them. Then, of course, the person the father of these children, we find out who he is. He's this other guy who he he can see and he has a bunch of other children they can all see. So there's a there's more wow. people out there who can see, but it's only from his bloodline. Huh. Um, so that's interesting. But beyond that, like they they escape the witch hunter by kind of packing up the village and moving. So they're going out and they're trying to find another village. Uh, one of the main kind of weird reasons they want to go find another village is to procreate because they're starting to find out that they're kind of inbred, you know, in, within the village is causing mm -hmm. problems with babies and stuff. So they're trying to go out and find another village. And so they go out and do that, but crazy stuff happens in between. And, and um, I'm not, I don't want to spoil anything because I think there are really, really good twists that you don't expect. Mm -hmm. um, and w in the article I wrote about how, People have called this Apple's Game of Thrones, and I would have wow. to agree to a point. I mean, it's not as deep as Game of Thrones. It's kind of like taking a piece of Game of Thrones. Um, they have a Cersei. You know, the queen, she is a mess. She goes through a lot of the same things that Cersei goes through in Game of Thrones. <laughs> uh, there's an Arya Stark okay. type character. There's, And, of course, there's a Khal Drago. You know. <laughs> I mean, it, literally, Jason Momoa plays himself. He <laughs> plays Khal Drago in, in this. He's just, <laughs> he's just this badass guy with this big, giant weapon, and he just kills people. Like, you know, it's a, it's a really bloody show, and it's super, it's gory. I mean, it's it's something that like, if you don't want to see that, you know, you wouldn't want to see this. But um, mm. I, I just, I, there were, I was going into it thinking it was kind of a shallow show about with really great costumes like amazing like their costumes are really great to the point actually where people have been complaining that the costumes are too good because blind people wouldn't have that intricate of costumes and i would completely disagree because if you have if you have a heightened sense of touch you're going to be you know communicating with each other through your costumes or whatever uh, they have this thing that they do where they have strings of beads and that's how they talk to each other they send messages. Hmm. So they'll have a string of beads that is a whole language and they'll send it, you know, to someone else. And then they'll sit oh, there and they'll sweet. hold the beads and they'll, they'll feel them and they'll be able to read it like a message. That's so, awesome. Yeah. It, 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 so it's just one of those little things that they put in there. So I would say that, you know, with the costumes being that intricate, that has a lot to do with it. You know, the, the sense of touch. Um, but I think the setting is amazing. The costumes are amazing, but it goes so, so much more beyond that in my opinion, because they, they have some intrigue. There's, you know, royal intrigue. There's you know, like a game of Thrones. Um, 
and again, I, I keep wanting to spoil it, but I can't. I can't <laughs> there's a lot of things I can't say, but um, <laughs> it ends up to where you can tell at the end that there's going to be a season two because they leave off where you know. And, and when they did season one, they knew that they were going to do a season two. And you can tell because they, they kind of leave off. Um, so I'm excited for that. You know, I wrote in the, the article I wrote about what I, my wish list for season two. Um, but I think if I talked about it here, it would really spoil a lot. So I don't want to go, <laughs> yeah. go too yeah. far into that. I'll, uh, okay. So first of all, the series has eight episodes, you said? Yeah. Eight one hour episodes. Yeah. They're about, yeah. 50 minutes. So. Okay. Um, yeah, I, I read your article and, uh, got me, got me excited about watching it. The, you posted in, you have like a five minute fight scene video that you yeah. posted in there and it surprised me how um how well thought the whole fight scene was i really yeah. enjoyed it and it was extremely bloody so yeah. that's always fun <laughs> yeah he, he does this thing where when he kills someone he has this this uh bladed weapon and he he cuts it in their neck and then he go he makes it go around their neck so that he cuts their entire neck and it's just he does this to everyone and it's really uh, i'm it's gonna like, have to kind of it, it's like creepy almost. Cool. <laughs> it's a little creepy, but I'm going to have to, that was the one thing in the whole clip that bothered me. Cause you know, yeah. okay. He, he, he slits the front of the neck. I get it. You know, that's fast and everything. But as he's going around the back, the guy's just kind of like leaning into the blade. Yeah. And it's yeah. like, eh, eh, that's not how it would work. <laughs> People wouldn't just stand there and wait for you to walk a circle around them. With your- <laughs> yeah, exactly. I, I, mean, I actually, I had a couple complaints in the article about things like that. You know, where. There's a scene in the forest where he's um, he's sneaking around, and there's things that you know you see in this in this show where you're like, oh, I didn't even think about that. You know, like the people who can see, they're standing off to the side and they're sneaking around because they know they have the they have the advantage where mm. they you know the other people are walking through, swinging stuff, trying to find them, and they're dodging it and and moving around stealthily, and I think that's pretty cool. But he does this; he can't see. But he does this and he's able to somehow kill these guys. And there's like the guy's friend is watching, walking two feet away and he doesn't hear him and he walks right by. And it's like, come on, like, <laughs> you know, they would have been able to hear that. And uh, yeah. and somehow he can walk around to the forest and swing his sword around but not hit any trees. While these guys are all bumbling, you know, fumbling over each other. And, you know, it's like. It, it, I don't know. <laughs> it's, they made. I think they made the bad guys a little too silly. That's what I'm saying. You know. But. That's. But I. But I do like that there is a, a warlord of some sort who doesn't like seeing people. I can. I can see that as being yeah. a legit motivation. Where mm-hmm. if you're in that world and you're on top, you do not want seeing people to come around and dethrone you. Yeah. yeah. They'd have so much power in that. It kind goes. Of a it actually goes a lot deeper than that, which I won't tell. Okay. Oh, but interesting. There is a. I thought the same thing. You know, you watch the first couple episodes, and you're like, "Well, I get it. She doesn't want them to have that power, but it goes further than that. So it's, <laughs> it's really. Oh, cool. that's intriguing. Yeah. Huh. Um. Yeah. Apple TV. Uh. That that series sounds sounds really intriguing. Um. Another Apple TV yeah. thing. It's not post apocalyptic, but the Tom Hanks. Uh, ship movie you heard about that one yeah what's that called um yeah that's another original gosh i can't remember the name of that anymore uh i'll say it's pretty good it's it's one of those where uh it it doesn't seem like it's going to be good for a little while because it's a slow burn but you get to that final 30 minutes and it just it all comes together very well they've they've kind of taught you uh, along on the movie of what's what the processes are so that it actually makes sense to watch a ship battle in real time. Oh, uh, I want to say it's Greyhound. Oh yeah. I think that's what it is. That sounds right. Okay. Yeah. That sounds familiar. And, um, uh, before, before we wrap up, there was a movie, a movie or a show that's coming out in December and I wanted to bring attention to it. Was it, um, it's not Alice in Wonderland, Alice in Borderland? Oh, yeah. What do you know about that? Um, 
It is based on, let's see, it's based on a comic book, I believe. Um, <laughs> I'm drawing a blank now. <laughs> I, well, I shouldn't have put you on the spot. I didn't warn Sean before this that I was going to ask about an article he wrote like two weeks ago. But <laughs> yeah, I've slept since then. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, you know, it looks like it's going to be uh, like some sort of maybe I, I watched the trailer today. And so I'm not able to spoil anything because I don't know anything past the trailer. Mm-hmm. But it looks like maybe uh, everybody disappears on planet Earth, except for a small number of people who have to do yeah. some sort of competition. Um, kind of like the classic uh, Rick and Morty show me what you got episode. <laughs> Really? <laughs> Where uh, if you haven't seen Rick and Morty, uh, Show me what it's a sci-fi. Got. And in one episode, um, we find out that there are sup- supremely powerful aliens who like to capture sentient planets and then make them compete against each other for their reality TV entertainment. <laughs> and Derek, you should uh, share that description in a Morty voice. You do a good Morty voice. <laughs> Gee, Steph, I, I don't know. <laughs> if our planet were targeted by the uh, by the aliens, we don't even know what they're called. <laughs> they're going to come here, really get us good. I can't, I don't even know if that's good. <laughs> I think that was good. I thought that was good. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, <laughs> Uh, so, so yeah, the aliens, uh, anyways, they destroy the planets that don't win their, their reality TV show. And it it looks like maybe that's what's going on with, in the borderlands. I'm not sure, but, uh, one thing I do recognize is that it looks subtitled. So I'm hoping it looks like it maybe is early in the development process. Netflix, we want subtitles. If you're listening to this, we want them and, uh, we don't like to read subtitles or dubs oh i said the wrong thing <laughs> uh, you're right you, we want we want dubs we don't want subtitles we want we want english dubs um so uh but uh but that's probably coming out in december so be on the lookout for that uh alice in borderland i think is what it's called yeah so uh it's gonna be um it looks like it could be really interesting uh if if I have to read the subtitles, it's not going to be as cool. But <laughs> Netflix is going crazy with all these adaptations. You know, they're they're doing. Uh, we have a couple articles. There's a DC comic book series called Sweet Tooth that they've grabbed. There's a novel called Black Crab that they've oh, grabbed. Yeah. And uh, it seems like they know, like they they know what's up. You know, they know post apocalyptic is the way to go, and they're just grabbing every comic book and book and. <laughs> you know, manga and everything. They're just grabbing it and, and making uh, adaptations. I think it's a good idea. That's exciting. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Sweet Tooth looks pretty cool too. I haven't yeah. uh, gotten into it, but it looks, I'm excited about it. Even just what you wrote about it. Yeah. It so kind of strange. Yeah. If you want to hear about Sweet Tooth, go to our website. Sean's writing about it. We've got an article about that. We've got an article about Alice in Borderland. Uh, all of this stuff. There's really, Nowhere else that you're going to get uh, pure, uncut, post-apocalyptic media content. So, um, so check that out. And at that point, I think it is a good point to wrap up today. I want to say a big special thank you to Morning Owl Media, morningowlmedia.com. They do podcast editing. They do video editing. Check it out. They've done a great job for us, and we really appreciate the help we've gotten. Also want to give a shout out to Vertical Sprite, the Twitch channel operator, Vertical Sprite. Uh, Also, you may recognize his voice because he does the uh, little introduction at the beginning of this podcast and every podcast from here on out. So thank you, Morning Owl Media and Vertical Sprite. This is Derek from Post Apocalyptic Media reminding you to stay safe out there and always be prepared for the big one. Goodbye. Bye, everyone. Bye.